All right. Now, be nice about her hair. Tell her it looks nice. The lady sidekick. All right, so what could this possibly be? <sighs> so, women are oppressed in video games because they are just there to be saved. And, no, the sidekicks. So, Women are oppressed in video games because every time they're a sidekick in a game, the quest is fucking annoying as all shit. And it fucking takes forever to get past because this fucking bitch is so annoying and does such stupid shit. I agree, we should totally just get rid of those. Like, fuck all those missions. They're just unnecessary. They're, they're stupid. All right, let's find out what we're really talking about, though. In 2013, 2K Games released Bioshock Infinite, the eagerly anticipated follow-up to the earlier hugely successful Bioshock games. All right, I said I said to say something nice about her hair, but she looks like a fox. She looks like a big, angry, feminist fox. <laughs> like, nah. Infinite's story centers on a man named Booker DeWitt, a private investigator with a bloody past who takes on a mysterious assignment. Bring us the girl and wipe away the dead. What follows is Booker's adventure to the flying city of Columbia where the girl, Elizabeth. The girl, Elizabeth. Sorry, I haven't played Bioshock Infinite. I, I played the first Bioshock. I haven't played the second one. That's why I haven't played the third one. But it also seems annoying as fuck because you got this chick with you through the whole fucking thing. And like, honestly, you gotta think of it like this. If it was a dude, like if it was a whiny fucking dude, nobody would fucking play that shit. Nobody wants, I mean, you'll fucking, you'll deal with some bullshit for a hot chick, but you ain't gonna deal with that shit for some whiny fucking dude. Has been imprisoned in a tower for her entire life. Busting her out of captivity while she busts out of her corset. See, and that's why you'll put up with fucking having this horse shit computer hindrance with you the whole fucking game. It just annoys you more often than anything else because then every once in a while you can turn around and look at her tits. There you go. Booker shoots his way across Columbia, getting caught up in all sorts of drama in the process. Drama? I like how it's drama. Like, he's fighting fucking giant armored fucking suited things the robots and shit and it, oh it's just drama just drama <sighs> as the game tells players a garbage story which suggests that oppressed people are just as bad as their oppressors and that the truth is always somewhere in the middle <laughs> no wonder you think it's a garbage story because that's the truth man like come on fucking if there was ever a time to show when the oppressed are just as bad as the oppressors. Now is the time. Look around you, Anita. Fucking... And the truth is always somewhere in the middle. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth. Somewhere in the middle. Like... Oh my god. But that's much too big a can of worms for us to open in this video. Let's just focus on Elizabeth. Elizabeth possesses an incredible ability to open portals to other timelines, an ability that plays a significant role in the plot as Booker and Elizabeth hop forward and backward and from side to side in time. She sounds pretty fucking powerful to me. That's pretty fucking powerful. Like, she can open portals to different times. Holy shit, that sounds pretty fucking powerful to me. I don't know what to tell you. She sounds pretty powerful to me leaping from one version of Columbia to another, and sometimes thrusting Booker into the past or the future. So as a plot device, which drives elements of the game's narrative, she's very significant. In gameplay terms, however, Elizabeth serves a different kind of role, that of a glorified door opener. Here we go. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Uh. I don't know why that's funny, but man, that just made me laugh. As with most shooters, Bioshock Infinite often puts you into situations where you can't progress until you've cleared an area of enemies. Like 90% of games out there, that 90% of games out there, you cannot advance until you've cleared all the enemies. So, 
saying that like what the she can't do anything while there's enemies out there because she's a girl. <sighs> it's just a better way to explain the game mechanic. It's more realistic. Like some games put up invisible portals, the fucking walls, your shimmery walls, and you're gonna fucking see that shit in Bioshock just so that or what. She can just run to the door and immediately start opening the door, but she's a fucking numbskull, right? Like, she's really shitty at opening doors, so it takes her conveniently just as long as it takes you to clear the room. How about that? Would that be better? Let's make her a fucking idiot instead. Danita! <sighs> the way it frequently does this is by blocking doors to the next area that can't be opened by Booker. Only Elizabeth can do this, which she does only when all the enemies have been killed. That sounds pretty powerful. She's the master of unlocking. Just like Jill. The master of unlocking. Fucking... Wait. There's things that only she can do. And there's things that only he can do. Only he can kill the bad guys. Only she can unlock the doors. And only she can open portals to different fucking realms. So she's kind of like... The gatekeeper! You know what I mean? Like, it fits her fucking character that she's opening fucking doors, that she's the master of unlocking. Come on. And all he can do is kill bad guys. Seems like she's got the deck stacked in her fucking favor, because at any point she can just open a portal and be like, fuck, this is getting rough and bail. Like, and then he's fucked! Like, you don't... That's not enough of a dynamic. She's not important enough. Oh my God. You see her as a tool, you ass. Like, ugh. For all of her tremendous powers, Elizabeth is reduced by the game's mechanics to doing the most basic and menial of tasks. <sighs> the most basic and menial of tasks. Opening the door to the next area, without which you wouldn't be able to get to the next area. So the game would be one room long, and you'd kill all the monsters and go, you can't open the door! Like, so okay. So, what? what's the solution? He unlocks the doors instead? Just make her completely fucking useless? Like, completely without purpose. All she's there for is to open fucking portals. That's it. Like, it isn't a multiplayer game, you ass. Like, if it was a co-op two-person game, it'd be a lot different, wouldn't it? It would change the game dramatically. Because then you'd have another human being there. But that's not what you fucking get. And to try and program this bitch to be like AI? Oh my god. Like, if you had to talk her into... Elizabeth, we need to open the door. I don't feel like unlocking the door. Let's look around the room first. There's nothing in the fucking room. I already broke all the barrels and killed all the monsters. Just open the door. Oh no, what's over here? Fucking nothing that I can click on. Can you click on it? No. What over the fucking door? And waiting around for her to open a door becomes a significant aspect of how players experience her. Let me scout ahead, see if there's some way to move forward. How players experience her. That just sounds dirty. I don't know. That just sounds dirty to me. How players experience her. Of course, she performs other actions as well, sometimes tossing Booker ammo, first aid, or other useful items, or opening tears through which he can have her summon things like weapons or killer robots to help him in combat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and what can the dude do? Shoot stuff. I see it. Like, she seems pretty fucking useful. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what you expect, Anita. Like, do you want her fucking kicking ass right next to him? She's running around shooting shit, throwing portals everywhere. Make you feel like you're not doing a very good job if you're just running around shooting people. And she's tossing portals, bringing fucking things in, shooting this motherfucker. Just running over here, unlocking this fucking door, shooting this asshole, bringing in another portal. Like, it'd make you feel like you're an idiot. Just running, like, what the fuck would be the point? Just have her be the main character. Whatever. Gives a shit. <sighs> now, there's nothing inherently wrong with the idea of characters who play a supporting role in combat situations. But Elizabeth is an example of a female sidekick who is reduced to a tool. You see her as a tool. You see her as a tool. Because you didn't pay attention to the game. Like I said, I haven't played the game. But I, from what I've been told, it's a really good game. And from... 
what I've been told, it's kind of like a love story between the two characters. So you just glazed over that shit, right? And just boiled it down to this, she's just a tool. She just opens doors. She just fucking makes portals. What do you want her to do? What? Like, it's so, it's so frustrating because, seriously, what do you want her to do? What, what would have made it cool for you? What difference could there have been put in place that would make the game acceptable to you? Does, does cut her out completely, make it a man, some weak little man? Make her the main character, just cut the fucking one dude out completely? Because it seems like that's where you're going. Like, so, okay, so then just one character so it can be like all the other Bioshocks <sighs> I don't know I just, it's just like it's it's so frustrating because what do you want seriously what do you what do you want what would you rather have how what yeah so girls don't find that acceptable to play? Girls wouldn't want to play that because it's a girl and you're always rescuing the girl? Well, then it's marketed for straight men and lesbians. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> there aren't gameplay mechanics that allow you to have meaningful interactions with her. She just opens doors and dispenses useful things, and her tear opening powers are not her own, but yours to call on and control with the press of a button. Elizabeth, a little help? Looks simple enough not her own it's not her power it's my power well yeah because motherfucker i'm the only one playing the game at other times she's less like a person and more like a sexualized slot machine tossing you the occasional coin as a glorified gatekeeper, Elizabeth joins a long tradition of female sidekicks, including Alex from Half-Life 2 and its follow-up episodes, and Yorda from the much-beloved Ico, whose magic is needed to activate doors, staircases, and other mechanisms that allow players to advance. Yorda also has a distinction of being the quintessential example of what I call the damsel escort mission. Uh, yeah, see, here's where I'm completely on her side. I fucking hate these missions. Fuck these missions. They always suck. You know, after making three whole videos about damsels, I'd kind of hope to never have to talk about them again. But gaming's love of using helpless women as both narrative and gameplay devices was too much for even those videos to contain. Yeah, but what else are you going to do, man? Like, that's... <sighs> what? Questing for love. Video games have been about questing for love since Pong. <laughs> Because <laughs> you were always trying to put your ball in the other side. Like, come on, man. It's, it's, the, it's romantic. Like, girls can't play a video game like Super Mario Brothers and be looking for Princess Peach and, like, watch it as a romantic and, like, maybe put themselves in the role of Peach. Oh, shit. That's what we want to stop. That's right. We want to make it to where... Princess Peach is rescuing Mario. So we want to make men weak and women strong. Hmm. You know, I think it would be awesome to be a house husband. I think that'd be really cool. Just if I could sit around the house, I'll do YouTube videos, and my wife can go and work. I'll take care of the kids. That'd be cool. Man, that'd be fun. I like the idea of that. You know what, Anita? We need to we need to totally go your direction. Let's fucking let's go one step further than equality. Let's make men subservient. That's that sounds awesome. Damsel escort missions occur when a female character joins the male player character, but is largely helpless. And rather than being a clear benefit to the player, she feels more like a burden. Because otherwise, what is the point? Like, yeah, because it makes the game a little bit more difficult. You don't play the game so that it gets progressively easier. Like, you make the game progressively more difficult. So you put in a random dungeon some dumb bitch you gotta deal with. Whatever. There's a lot of times where you're escorting guys from place to place. 
it is not mute it is not exclusive to women god damn it like I just don't I just don't get it I don't I who cares in Ico, players free Yorda from a cage early on. She then joins Ico on this journey, and much of the game consists of solving puzzles so that Yorda, who can't make leaps or climb walls on her own, can traverse the environment. Meanwhile, players also need to protect her from the shadow monsters who sometimes try to whisk her away. Spoiler alert! Yes, in the ending cutscene, Yorda carries Aiko out of the crumbling castle. But what the narrative tells us, or shows us, in the end doesn't undo the impact of how we experience a character through the gameplay. You just don't like being portrayed as a burden? Is that what it is? You don't like being portrayed as a burden? So you just have that problem with realism, no, where, no matter where it comes from. Another classic damsel escort mission occurs in Resident Evil 4, where Ashley Graham, the president's daughter, has caused players tremendous frustration over the years by burdening them with the need to protect and manage her. Yeah, dude, seriously, fuck that shit. That's the reason why I will never play that game, because I am not dealing with that bitch. Uh, no, no. Uh -uh. Whether they're presented as capable or helpless, female companions often encounter situations in which they just can't proceed on their own. Ellie in The Last of Us, for instance, is hardly a Yorda-like damsel, but when she encounters a body of water, she may as well be, and Joel has to go out of his way to get her across. Nope. She's fucking scared of water! She can't swim! There you go! There's a little bit of depth for the character! Like, otherwise, everybody just jumps in, fucking swims across, and who gives a shit? It, it limits the amount of time you're playing the game. If every time you come to a fucking creek, it gives you an extra 20 minutes of figuring out how to get that dumb bitch across, there you go. 20 more minutes of gameplay. That's what people want. The fuck do you want out of a game? Seriously. Like, just no strife. Of course, that's exactly what you want. Just no problems. You want games where it's like, oh, I heard there might be a problem. And then you go and look into it and, oh, no, no problem. Everything is fantastic because everything's just wonderful. Like, fuck you, bitch. That, it's... He's retarded. Now look. There's a lot to admire about The Last of Us, but I guarantee you nobody's favorite part of that game was helping Ellie get across the water. Yeah! Cause that shit's fucking annoying! But it's there for the enjoyment of the annoyance of it, for the success. When you get to the point where you get that bitch across and you go, ah, I figured it out! Like, without that, why are you playing games? A good rule of thumb is that if you spend any portion of a game carrying a female character around, it's a pretty safe bet that it at least has some elements of the damsel escort mission. Oh, you're heavier than you look. <laughs> to be clear, there's nothing whatsoever inherently wrong with depictions of people helping each other in times of difficulty. If anything, we could do with a lot more narratives that focus on companionship, cooperation, and support. But the models games give us rarely offer experiences in which this kind of support is truly mutual. <laughs> I don't know, man, I don't understand how you can't see it as mutual. I kill all the monsters, you open the door. We go on because we have each other. It's it's a mutual, we need each other to fucking succeed. Like, but you don't think it's that way because you're controlling both characters? And because to you, all the girl does is open doors. Like, and that's so menial because, you know, even though it's completely necessary to continue in the game, it's just opening a door. It's not like killing. You're just jealous. You just want the fucking kill count. Dumb bitch, play Dynasty Warriors. If all you want is the fucking kill count and you want badass strong women, play Dynasty Warriors. Go with the bitch with the fucking, the big hoop metal things. She's badass as fuck and wreck your kill count as high as you want and... Instead, we see a pattern of men frequently caring and helping women in situations where they're otherwise helpless. This pattern is rooted in sexist ideas about men as protectors and women as the ones who need this kind of protection. 
It's coded into the gameplay that men are the ones who kill and protect, and that women are the ones who experience moments of helplessness and need to be carried. It goes both ways in most games. There are times when the dude gets knocked out and the chick drags his ass to safety. That happens a lot. It's just because you didn't play through the game enough but to fucking cut up a whole bunch of fucking clips for your goddamn video. Like, man, uh, whatever. Just... I don't know why it frustrates me so much. I really don't know why it frustrates me so much. I think I'm going to think about that as I continue with this, and maybe at the end, I'll, maybe I'll figure out why it frustrates me so much. When these female characters are of aid to the player, it's often in rudimentary ways, as a glorified door opener, or even as a more basic tool. More basic tool? Why? <sighs> In the Ocarina of Time dungeon, inside Jabu Jabu's belly, players must carry the snobby Princess Ruto around. At one point, even using her as a weight to press down a switch. <laughs> okay, well that's a pretty basic tool. But like, that that was her fucking, that was the, that was the whole gimmick of that dungeon. D Legend of Zelda has always had gimmick dungeons. There's always a fucking water dungeon, or... This one's the sand dungeon. This is the dungeon where you fly around the whole fucking time. They all had that kind of shit. So that was that dungeon. Like, you were trying to... This bitch got ate by a big fish. And you needed to take her out of there. But she was a princess. And therefore terribly entitled because of patriarchy. So you had to carry this dumb bitch around over your head through the whole fucking dungeon because she was useless, like a rock. So it kind of fit when you used her like a rock. I, that was the fucking, gets the, without. You just piss because it's women. It's just, it's just, you're just pissed because it's, ugh. And in Metal Gear Solid 5, you've got four sidekick options to take with you on missions. A dog, a horse, a robot, and a woman. And of course, you take the dog, because who the fuck wants some chick with them out? Uh, yeah. Finally, female companions often function as cheerleaders, doling out little ego boost to players for gunning down bad guys or pulling off other feats. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. That wasn't even cheerleading. What the fuck? They, they had nothing to do with cheerleading. That clip had nothing to do with what you're talking about. Along with the glorified door opening and the damsel-like aspects, female sidekicks are there to make players feel better about themselves. To make them feel important and skilled. Nine. You did it! You did it! Wow! You're so cool! You're just trying to impress me. Were you impressed? Got all those guys all by myself? But these interactions are rarely depicted as mutually supportive. You fucking, there was eight clips right there of bitches cheering dudes on, and you couldn't have taken one of those and actually used it? Oh my god. I need it. Maybe that's what pisses me off so much, just the shoddiness of the whole fucking thing. It's not nearly as common in these scenarios for the male player character to offer emotional support to their female sidekick to tell her that she's doing a great job. It's because it's one, it, it's stupid both ways. It's one computer animated character telling another computer animated character, good job. But if I fucking tell my companion to do something and they do it, why should I be telling them good job? Fucking who gives a shit? Like, it, sometimes you look at it and go, oh, nice shot. Like, but that's me saying it. Why the fuck did, who gives a shit what the character says? The, uh, like, it seems like on the face, Snake doesn't tell the girl that she's doing a good job. Well, who gives it's fake, fake people? God damn it. These particular sidekicks aren't designed as characters that players can actively engage in developing a relationship with. Characters who are fully fleshed out people with their own goals and desires that sometimes require players to compromise their own wants or desires. This pattern of female sidekicks who serve more as gameplay devices, door openers, and ego boosts than as people is a design approach rooted in the idea of games as power fantasy. Yeah! That's... Oh, you nailed it! Players get to feel powerful and important, sometimes issuing orders that are obeyed without hesitation or doubt. 
Yeah, they... That's why they haven't made Cuckold the game. Like, you don't... Nobody plays video games to feel like a piece of shit. Anita, you don't understand. Like, maybe that's what angers me so much. The fucking play in ignorant. You don't fucking seem to get the whole point of, like, everything. I, I, Companion dynamics in games almost never model what equal footing, cooperation, and collaboration in a relationship might look like, but instead serve to make the player feel like the center of the world, the one in control, which is not at all a model for healthy relationships. It's, it's a video game, Anita. Nobody's looking at it like it's a relationship. Ship. God damn it. Like, what the. What in the fuck? What in the fuck are you talking about? It's a relationship. It's fucking. What? Of course, a huge number of games focus on men fighting alongside other men. And in these games, the male companions often have some of the same characteristics we sometimes see in female companions. And that's at least 10 more confirms, Hunter 2 1, good shooting. It's very common for male characters to compliment the player on their good shooting or to breach a door that the player character can't open himself. However, typically these characters are presented as equal participants in the conflict. Typically, those characters are equal participants in the combat. I, I, I don't... In shooters ranging from Call of Duty to Gears of War, the player's male companions are armed and active and are portrayed as playing their part to fend off or eliminate the enemy threat. Occasionally in these games, male characters do have to protect other men, but unlike scenarios in which men protect women, these less common instances don't reinforce pre-existing cultural attitudes about men, women, and gender. So it's fine for men to protect other men. Okay, well that... That happens a lot in games nowadays, so... But I gotta tell you, like, I'm... I give less of a shit when it happens. Like, sometimes you just plug the dude for fun. I don't know. Like, I... I see... I just tend to care less if it's a dude that I'm protecting. Like, I... It annoys me more. Similarly, the occasional situation in which a female character protects a male one, which happens in the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot, among other games, also isn't a problem, because it doesn't work to reinforce limiting, harmful ideas about women or men that already exist in our culture. In other words, we live in a culture that says, generally speaking, men should be the protectors and women should be the protected. Well, we live in a culture where, generally speaking, blah, 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 I mean, that, that's the fucking culture we live in! And you seriously want to change that? Well, I got some places where you can start. When women function as competent companions whose skills are more or less equal to those of the player character, it can challenge these ideas. Yeah, and it takes all the challenge out of the game. Like, the... Uh... The Last of Us goes against the grain by giving us the character of Tess, a somewhat rare and refreshing example of a woman who fights alongside the male protagonist. And the later Gears of War games do a decent job of including female squad members who are on equal footing with their male counterparts. That's because they're on equal footing with the male counterparts. Because that's not the game mechanic in that game. That they're weak and need to be fucking handheld through the whole goddamn thing. That's not the point of those games. There's bigger issues in those games, but every game can't be the end of the goddamn world! And thankfully, we're seeing more games that complicate and subvert the old patterns, providing players with relationships with supporting characters who don't function as mere extensions of the player, but who feel like separate individual people. Man, that looks like a shit game. I'm just going to be honest with you. That looks like a shit game. The 2016 indie title One Night Stand throws players into a situation with a female character who clearly has her own feelings and her own desires. That sounds like a shit game, too. And communicating with her is a matter of trying to find some common ground for mutual understanding, not one in which the player is in total control of the situation. See, what makes me laugh is that it's a game called One Night Stand. So if it's One Night Stand, 
why the fuck am I talking to this bitch at all? Like, it should be... That was fun. Bye! In Left Behind, the wonderful add-on for The Last of Us, Ellie's companion Riley is not someone players can issue orders to, or someone they have to protect. Riley is constantly active, often taking control of the situation, sometimes competing and being playful with Ellie, and as a result, she doesn't feel anything like the companion characters in most games, or even anything like Ellie herself felt in the original game. Instead, she feels much more like a real person accompanying Ellie on the journey. But she's a fucking kid too! Like, she looks like she's a little bit older kid. So, you're still playing the same fucking game. You're just playing it from Ellie's perspective. You still got some other person that has to fucking protect Ellie. You didn't notice that, did you? And while Trico in 2016's The Last Guardian may not be a human character, he does possess some of the characteristics we'd like to see more of in human companions and games. Asking Trico to do things isn't a simple matter of pushing a button and watching him immediately obey. He's not a simple tool, not just an extension of the player. Sometimes he's hesitant, reluctant, even frustrating. Yeah, see, fuck that. I... Now nah, I don't want to play that fucking game either, because I hate that shit. I hate that shit. When you tell the fucking game to do something, and it's like... Fuck that shit. That pisses me off. I hate that shit. I hate that shit. Almost as much as I hate, like, the old Final Fantasy, walk five steps and get into a fight. Almost as much as I hate that shit. But this makes it feel more like he's a living, breathing creature with thoughts and feelings of his own. And by taking time to pet him, you can sometimes express your connection to him in ways that fall outside of the requirements of the gameplay and the story. So we need a pet function with female sidekicks? That sounds good. I, I can get on board with that. And crucially, Trico is often the one protecting the player, rather than the other way around. He does not exist to fuel a power fantasy, but to allow for gameplay mechanics that focus on cooperation, care, and helping each other. Okay, that almost looked cool. That don't, well, I mean, that looked cool, but that almost made me want to, like, play it. But I noticed that the kid just, like, ran into the dude, just, like, ran into him and fell down. So, like, if that is the extent of the martial capabilities of that character, like, if that's what you gotta do, just to get that thing to... That does not sound like a fun fucking game, man. I don't know. I... <sighs> no. When supporting female characters in games don't have this kind of depth, when they exist primarily to be protected or to be ordered around, they not only reinforce harmful ideas about gender, they also fail as characters. I just don't get it. Like, fail as characters. <sighs> You don't seem to pay any attention to the character. Like, one of the things I've noticed through watching your videos, you very rarely ever pay attention to the character. Like, it's only in the games like Last of Us where they beat you over the fucking head with the characters. Like, those are the only games where it seems like you fucking pay any attention to the characters. You never pay any attention to the characters. The characters are inconsequential to you. It's all about the oppression. Regardless of their gender, race, class, or sexuality, a person is more than a tool, and more than a burden. And games can and should give us mechanics and stories that reflect that. Well, they give us mechanics and stories that reflect real life. Women are fucking burdens. There you go. Thank mm -hmm. you.